Hello, everyone, and welcome to the AI Research Roundup. I'm your host, Alex, and today we're diving into some interesting AI research. Gokush Goka, we'll be looking at a paper called Tab PFN, a transformer that solves small tabular classification problems in a second. So, what this paper introduces is essentially a pre trained transformer model called Tab PFN that's designed specifically for, well, small tabular classification tasks. The really cool thing is that it claims to do this super fast, like in under a second, and get this, without needing any hyperparameter tuning. It just learns directly from the data you feed it during inference using something called in-context learning. Okay, so the paper includes this figure, figure one, which kind of lays out the whole process. Um, on the left side, it shows the two main phases. First, there's an offline part, done just once, where they train tab PFN on a whole bunch of, like, synthetic data sets generated from what they call a prior. Then, the online part is what happens when you have a real data set. You just feed the training data and the test points into the already trained tab PFN, and boom, you get predictions in one go. The right side shows a bit about the architecture, how the training samples and test samples are processed, and importantly, how the test points sort of look back at or attend to the training samples to make their predictions. Building on that, I mentioned the offline training phase uses data generated from a prior, right? Well, this next figure, figure two, gives us a bit more insight into that. It shows examples of the kinds of um, graphical structures they use to actually generate all that synthetic data. You can see examples labeled like a Bayesian neural network, or BNN, and also some structural causal models, SCMs. These models are basically how they create those diverse data sets for the offline training, teaching tab PFN about different possible data structures before it ever sees a real problem. Okay, so we've talked about how tab PFN is trained on all this synthetic data generated from those priors like BNNs and SCMs. Well, this next figure, figure four, gives us a visual sense of what that training actually results in. Um, it shows the decision boundaries that tab PFN draws on some simple toy data sets compared to other common methods like nearest neighbors, decision trees, cap boost, and even an auto ML system. You can see tab PFN's boundaries tend to be pretty smooth and, well, kind of intuitive, which the paper suggests comes from those inductive biases it learned during its offline training. Right, so we just saw those smooth decision boundaries in figure four, which tab PFN apparently learns from all that synthetic data. Well, figure three here actually visualizes what some of that synthetic data looks like. You can see these scatter plots on the left, showing different patterns where each dot is a sample and the color shows its class. And then, um, next to it, they show similar plots for a couple of real data sets they used for validation, Parkinson's and Wine, just to give a comparison. It really highlights the kind of diverse structures the model trains on. So after seeing the kinds of data in Figure 3, Figure 5 here shows us the payoff. It plots the actual performance, measured by ROCAUC, against the time budget allowed for different methods. The really striking thing is tab PFN, that orange line, it hits a very high accuracy level almost instantly, within a second. Compare that to others like autogluon or autosclern. They need way more time, like minutes or even an hour, to reach similar performance levels. The other plots show tab PFN winning often and ranking well, especially with very little time. Okay, so... Figure 5 gave us that visual of tab PFN's speed advantage. Now table 1 here gives us the actual numbers from their benchmark tests on those OpenML datasets. Um, you can see metrics like mean AUC and mean accuracy. If you look at the mean AUCOVO scores, tab PFN, especially the standard version, gets around 0.934, which is basically the same as autogluon, which also gets 0.934 after an hour. But look at the time. The basic tab PFN takes just 1.3 seconds on a CPU or 0.05 seconds on a GPU, while autogluon takes over 3,000 seconds. It really drives home that speed versus performance trade-off we saw before. 
Even the slightly slower standard tab PFN is vastly faster than the traditional methods for similar accuracy. Okay, so we saw the overall performance numbers in Table 1, showing tab PFN matching AutoML systems, but way faster. Well, Figure 6 here lets us dig a little deeper into that performance. Um, it shows the normalized ROC-AUC score for different models, but this time it breaks it down based on certain characteristics of the datasets themselves. This helps us see how things like maybe the number of features or the size of the dataset might affect the performance of tab PFN compared to the other methods. So yeah, looking at those detailed performance breakdowns really just reinforces the main story here. Um, the bottom line with tab PFN is its incredible speed for these smaller tabular datasets. It basically gives you state-of-the-art results, comparable to complex AutoML systems, but in a fraction of a second. It really provides a powerful and super fast new baseline for a lot of common tasks. Well, that wraps up our look at tab PFN today. Thanks so much for tuning in to the AI Research Roundup. I'm your host, Alex.